Welcome back to AP Computer Science A. An important aspect of computer science is creating interactive programs for users. In this lesson, we're going to learn about user input. In order to incorporate user input into our programs, we are going to have to add a couple of elements to our existing starter code in order to successfully receive input from our users. The first bit of code that is needed is the import statement. Essentially, this code is saying, import the class scanner from java.util for use in this program. java.util is a package that stores various classes of code that are used to add functionality to our programs. In this case, we are using the scanner class, which will allow for user input. We will discuss classes later in Unit 2, but for now, just know the scanner allows us to get user input. The next part of the skeleton is actually creating an initialized scanner. This should look familiar to us because it's similar to the variables that we had been creating in previous exercises. Let's break this down a bit. The call scanner at the beginning of this line of code is actually a data type. Scanner is its own data type that is defined in the scanner class. You will learn more about classes and objects in later units. Once the data type is declared, the next part is naming the variable. While in this example we use the name input, you can use any variable name when writing the initial steps for user input. The next part of this line is the creation of a new scanner object. In order to create a scanner that will search for user input, we need to first create a new scanner. The keyword new is used to indicate that we are creating a new scanner object. We'll learn more about this in the next unit. The last component is the argument or actual parameter that is being input into the scanner. An actual parameter is a variable or value that you want to use in a given program. In order to create this new scanner, we must give it the input value of system.in. System.in is a value that typically corresponds to keyboard input. Including this allows us to input keyboard data into our programs. This belongs to the same class as system.out.println. In order to receive input from the user, we must create a new variable that takes the assigned value of the scanner variable dot next value. Each data type has its own corresponding next command that will allow the program to receive the input value. In order to get user input, you must use the scanner variable that you created followed by the dot next value command. If you do not include the variable name, it will cause your program to throw an error, as it does not recognize the command without the scanner variable. The data type you are declaring the variable as must correspond to the input type. In this case, because next int is being used for a string variable, the program is throwing an error. Here is an example of how you might run a program using user input. The first line of code following the creation of our scanner is a system.out.println that asks the user to state their name. The following line is a call to the scanner asking for a next line, or string input value. The user then types their name and hits enter. Upon hitting enter, the value carol is being stored in the variable name, and the next line of code runs, which asks the user to state their age. That is followed by a call to scanner asking for next int, or an int value, and the user is prompted to enter an int value, which is stored in the variable age. Lines 11 and 12 simply print out the values of name and age. It's important to note that if the user tries to input a value that is not the same type as the variable, the program will throw an error. In this case, when the user inputs carol as the age value, the program takes issue because carol is not an integer. Note that it does not throw an error when the number 43 is used for the name variable. This is because numbers can be string values. Even though numbers were input, because the program calls for next line, it interprets the numbers as a string type. One important bug to note with user input is that using a next line statement following a next int or next double will lead to issues in the input your program is receiving. When next int receives input from the user, it only reads a portion of the user inputs. When a next line is called following the next int call, 
the input is still reading input from the same line that the next int call came from. If we were to print the value of name to the screen, it would appear blank as the value assigned to name comes directly from the line following the next int call. Here is a run through of this issue in action. Notice that after the age is input into the program, the user isn't able to add their name to the program. This is because next line is taking the value that follows the number 15. When we try to print name, the value is blank. We can fix this problem by adding a buffer next line statement that absorbs the value of the blank space following the number input. Then we can make another next line call, which will receive user input. Here is an example of how we can use the next line buffer. Now the user can input their name following the next int call, and the program returns the correct values. Remember that next int and next double are both examples of partial line methods that will leave a buffer at the end. Adding a next line call without assigning it right afterward will fix this issue. Now that you've learned about user input, let's get some practice in the editor.